Mr. Wright here, and welcome to this film in which I'll take you through some IGCSE questions on identifying non-linear graphs. This is a very common topic, and it's well worth you being on top of these questions. You can download the questions by hitting the link in the description, and then you can work on the questions and then check your answers against mine. Or, of course, you can download the questions and work on them as you watch the film. Work alongside me. Entirely up to you. If you've got any questions, if anything isn't clear, please leave a question in the comments and of course I'll respond. If you find the film useful, then please tell me so in the comments and please hit like as well. Anything you do to interact with the film will help spread the word about the channel. Great, let's get on with the maths. Question one, right, I'm given six graphs here. And I'm asked to complete the table below with the letter of the graph that could represent each equation. Okay, so the first one I'm looking for is I'm looking for one of these graphs that could have the equation y equals minus 2 over x. Okay, now one thing which is quite useful to look at sometimes is what happens when x is 0 perhaps. Now when x is 0 then in this case y would be minus 2 over 0 which is undefined. So we're looking for one of these which doesn't have a value when x is 0. So it could be that one or it could be that one. So I've got it down to 2 now. Right now let's try another common sense idea. Let's do an easy x, shall we? Let's say x is 2. When x is 2, y would be minus 2 over 2, which is minus 1. So I'm looking at the two I've got left, b and e, and I know that when x is 2, y has to be minus 1. Okay, well, in graph e here, when x is 2, y is positive, so it can't be that one. So it must, by a process of elimination, be graph B. And just to have a check, when x is 2 here, look at that, y is negative. So I'm going to say graph B for that one. Right, let's have a look at the next. So the next one is y equals 5 minus x squared. Now, I kind of know which one it is already because it's got a negative x squared there. And I know that graphs which have a positive x squared are like that, and graphs which have a negative x squared are like that. So I know it's going to be graph A, okay? But let's just work out other ways of working that out in case you hadn't clicked and you weren't sure about what I've just said. How else could you do it? Well, Again, we could imagine x is 0. Now, if x is 0, y will be 5 minus 0, which is 5. So I'm looking for a graph which has a y-intercept at 5, right? So not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one. Look at that. That would have done it, wouldn't it? Okay, so graph A is the answer to that. Right, next one. y is minus 2x cubed. Let's have a look. y is minus 2x cubed. Right. Well, again, I kind of know this straight away because I know what x cubed looks like. Okay, x cubed looks kind of like this. So minus something x cubed will be kind of like that. So I know already that it's going to be graph f, but maybe that's just because I'm a maths teacher. So let's work it out in some other ways. Let's take x to be 0 again. Now, if x is 0, y would be minus 2 times 0 cubed, so y would be 0. So I'm looking for one of these graphs that goes through 0, 0. So no, no, yes, no, no, yes. Okay. Now let's take an easy value for x, shall we? Let's take x is 1. Okay. Now if x is 1, then y would be minus 2 times 1 cubed, which is minus 2 times 1, which is minus 2. So 
my correct graph goes through the point 1 minus 2. Let's have a look at both of these. So when x is 1, kind of here, I'm supposed to get a y value of minus 2. Well, in this graph, I get a positive y. So I know it's not that one. Let's just check this one. When x is 1, do I get a negative value for y? Yes, I do. So my answer is going to be f. And that is question 1 finished. Question 2. Right, I've got six graphs. There they are. And the first question is to write down the letter of the graph of y equals 10 divided by x squared. Okay, all right, well, let's try an x is 0, shall we? When x is 0, y would be 10 divided by 0 squared. 10 divided by 0, well, that would be undefined. You're not going to get a value for y there. So I'm looking for one of the graphs that doesn't have a point when x is 0. So not that one. That one doesn't have a point when x is 0. Not that one. That one could be. Not that one. And that one could be. So I'm down to three possibilities now. Right. Let's try x is a small positive number, shall we? So let's try x is 1, for example. If x is 1, y would be 10 divided by 1 squared. Well, that's 10 divided by 1, which is just 10. So my graph, when x is 1, y should be 10. So let's have a look at my last remaining graph. So let's look at graph B. Now, when x is 1, y should be 10. <laughs> well, that y is negative, isn't it? So that's not going to be 10. So graph B is out. Let's look at graph D. When x is 1, y should be 10. Well, it could be. So I think graph D is still in. And let's look at graph E. When x is 1, y is supposed to be 10. Yep, it could be. So I've still got graph D and graph F in the running. Now, how shall I differentiate between graph B and graph F? Well, I see that graph D, when x is negative... It has positive y's. And graph f, when x is negative, it has negative y's. So let's stick in a negative x and see what happens to my function. So let's try x is minus 1. If x is minus 1, y would be 10 divided by minus 1 squared. Now that's 10 divided by minus 1 squared. Minus 1 times minus 1 is 1, so positive. So that's just 10. So... When x is negative, minus 1, y should be positive, plus 10. So when x is negative, y should be positive. Well, it's not graph f, is it? Because when x is negative, y is negative. So it's not that one. So I'm left with graph d. So that is part a done. Right. Let's have a look at... Part B. Let's delete all that out of the way. Okay. So, graph B. The equation is, look at this one, y equals x minus 3 plus 3x squared minus x cubed. Right. Now, I have a feeling that I can see the answer straight away but let's ignore that because that's probably just because i'm a maths teacher so let's imagine that we're looking at this afresh and we're going to use our tried and tested method of trying out some x's and seeing where that gets us let's first of all try x is zero when x is zero y would be zero minus three plus three times zero squared well that's just zero minus zero cubed that's just zero look at that when x is zero y is minus 3. Right, so it could be a, because when x is 0, y is negative. It can't be b. It could be c. It can't be d. It could be e. And it can't be f. Right. Okay, now I'm getting somewhere. Now, what shall I do next? Well, I'm going to try 
x is very positive. Let's see what I get. Do you see? Because when x is very positive, say 100, then I get a very positive answer here. If x is 100, I get a high y there. If x is 100, I get a low y on this graph, minus loads. Okay. And if x is 100 here, I get a high y. So let's try x is very high. Let's try x is 100. I think that's going to be overkill, but never mind. So x is 100. Well, in that case, y is going to be 100 minus 3 plus 3 times 100 squared is 10,000 minus 100 cubed. Well, 100 cubed is a million, isn't it? So look at that. It's going to be hugely negative, isn't it? Because by the time I've minus a million, all these little, relatively little pluses aren't going to matter. So when x is 100, y is hugely negative. I suppose we could work that out. I mean, there's no absolutely no reason to work it out. Okay, but I'm going to work it out anyway. Minus a million, which is one with six zeros. It gives me <laughs> minus... 969,903, right? So it is really very negative. All right. So which of my remaining graphs gives me a really negative x, a really negative y when x is 100? Well, it's not graph A. Because when x is 100, I get a really positive one. It could be graph C, look. Right? And it's not graph E. So I'm left with graph C. There we go. All right, last one now. I hope you're getting the idea of doing these just slowly and steadily using some common sense. You don't have to leap at the answer. Okay. Right, in part C, you've got y equals minus 3 over x. So let's take x is 0 again. In this case, you'd have y equals minus 3 divided by 0, which is undefined. So we're looking for our graphs which don't have a point when x is 0. Right, don't have a point when x is 0. So b would be OK. d would be OK. a and c would not. e would not. And f would be OK. All right. Now, why don't we take an easy value for x now? Let's take y, let's take x is 1, shall we? Okay, so if x equals 1, then y is minus 3 divided by 1. Well, that's just minus 3. So I've got the point 1 minus 3. Right, let's look at my remaining graphs and see which one returns a negative y for a positive x. So in graph B, if I put a positive x in, I get a negative y. So that's still in the running. Graph D, if I put a positive x in, I get a positive y, so that's out. Graph F, if I put a positive x in, I get a positive y, so that's out. So I'm left with only graph B. So that is question two finished. Question three. Okay, here are six graphs. Yes, they are. Right, complete the table below with the letter of the graph could represent each equation. Write your answers on the dotted lines. Okay, the first one we're looking for is y equals sine x. Now, I, I know the answer, okay, and perhaps you do too, but I'm going to imagine that we don't and work it out from scratch as if we were puzzling over this in the exam. Let's first of all have a look. When x is 0, what would y be? Well, y would be sine of 0, which I know is 0. But if you didn't know that, of course, you could put it in your calculator. You could simply go sine 0 equals and get the answer 0. So I'm looking for an equation which has the point 0, 0. Could be A, can't be B, could be C, no for D, no for E, and no for F. All right, so I'm left with A and C. Now, A has a negative x, sorry, has a negative y, look, the minute you go positive. Whereas graph C has a positive y, the minute x goes positive. So let's try a positive x. I don't know, let's try 10. Okay. So if x is 10, 
then what would y be? Well, y would be sine of 10. So really, this just boils down to, is sine of 10 positive or negative? Well, sine of 10 is positive. You can confirm that on your calculator if you didn't know it already. So when I have a positive x, I need to go to a positive y. So my answer is going to be c. All right. Let's have a look at the next question, part b. Right. In part b, we have got y equals minus 3 over x. Well, let's try x is 0. If x is 0, y is minus 3 divided by 0, which is undefined. So we're looking for a graph that doesn't have a point when x is 0. So that one does have a point. That one doesn't. That one does. I'm crossing it. That one does. That one does. And this one doesn't. So I'm down to 2 now, aren't I? Again, let's try a small positive x. Let's try x is 1. Okay, now, when x is 1, y would be minus 3 divided by 1, which is minus 3. So I've got the point 1 minus 3. So when x is positive, y becomes negative. Look. Now let's look at graph B. When x is positive, y is positive. Well, it's not going to be that one then, is it? Let's just check graph F. When x is positive, y is negative, isn't it? So it's going to be graph Okay, right, one to go. Here we go. So this time we are going to be looking at, it's a good idea to have a pencil and a rubber when you're doing these questions by the look of it. We're looking at y equals 4x cubed minus 5x. Okay, well let's try x is 0. When x is 0, y will be 4 times 0 cubed minus 5 times 0. Well, that's just 0. So I'm looking for a graph that has the point 0, 0. Right. Could be A. Can't be B. Could be C. Can't be D. Can't be E. Can't be F. Now, at this point, you've got A and C left, and you might just say, look, I've already done C, so plump for A. But let's just work it through. Okay. Let's take a very high because when x is very high on graph A, okay, I get a positive. Actually, it's not a very good idea to take a very high x because I'm not quite sure. It depends where I hit on the on the x's on graph C, doesn't it? So it's not going to be very useful. I'll tell you what will be useful, though, is appreciating that this one keeps on upping and downing because as x gets bigger, this function, the value of y doesn't go up and then down and then up and then down. Have a look at this. As x gets bigger, for instance, if y is 100, then, sorry, I beg your pardon, if x is 100, come on, Chris, if x is 100, then y is 4 times a million, 100 cubed, minus 500. Well, the, the minus 500 is almost irrelevant, isn't it? Because you've got 4 millions there. So in fact, as x gets bigger, this part of the equation, the 4 times x cubed, just dominates. And y will get bigger and bigger and bigger. Hence, the answer is A for that question. Okay, and that is question 3 done. Well done for making it through those questions. I hope you found the film useful. I really like this topic because you don't have to be a mathematical genius to sort through these graphs. You can take a careful and logical and thoughtful approach and it works. If anything wasn't clear, please leave me a question in the comments and of course I'll help you out. And if you found the film useful and you're preparing for your Edexcel IGCSE Maths, why not subscribe to the channel? See you in the next film.